Hi, in today's video we're looking at CSS gradients so we can make stuff like this, and like this. And as a bonus, we're going to do it in under 5 minutes. CSS gradients are really awesome. I think most people understand the very basics of it. We're still going to cover that in this video though. But what some people don't know is about the repeating stuff and some of the cool tricks you can do with it to get some really cool results. and use. Um, when you use them in creative ways, sometimes you can pull off some really awesome stuff. So with it being a five minute Friday, we're going to start that timer and we're going to get going. One thing I do want to mention is a gradient in CSS is considered an image. So to create one, we need to use a background image for this. I'm not going to get into the technical of why that all is. You can find out more in the spec if you are curious about that. But um, so that just does mean on here to get a gradient, we want to use our background image like that and we're going to want to stretch this out. Um, I'm also going to give this a width of let's just say 50 viewport width, a height of 50 viewport height just so we can actually see our box. Um, there's two types of things. We can do either a linear gradient or a radial gradient. So I'm going to start with the linear gradient so we just have to write out linear gradient like that and then we put some parentheses just like that and it's all the magic is happening right here so I'm just going to write red comma blue. And whoop, just like that, we have a nice gradient coming in there. Now I can also add more colors in here if I want. So I can go from red to pink to orange to blue. So I just have to comma separate all the colors. Uh, of course, I'm using keywords here just because it's really fast for demo purposes, but you can easily use anything you want. Hex, RGB, HLS, uh, you get the idea. Another thing you can do is you can control where the colors are stopping at. So let's just go back to my red to blue example because I think it's a bit clearer when we just have the two. Um, so I can say red and 75% and it's going to push the red to 75% and then it's going to start transitioning into blue. Or I could say red to 10%, um, it's going to go 10% and then start transitioning into the blue over the course of the rest of it. Now you might be saying that looked a lot like the original and it sort of is, but on the original it's actually going red as soon as it starts it's transitioning into the blue. So anytime you put a number here it's, it is forcing it down a little bit more before a change starts to happen. Um, you can you don't have to use percentages. I could say 150 pixels if I wanted to, or other units. It doesn't you know any unit would work here for positioning it. Um, you can also control the direction. Is this writing to left? Um, so to the direction you want to go. So it's going to go from right to left. You can also say to right top. So we're going to start at the bottom and move our way to the top right. And if this was the other way around, it would also work. Uh, it doesn't matter which way around you put that. You can also put in a degree. So say 45 deg for the degrees. So um, I mentioned before we have the radial gradient, which means it acts a little bit like a circle. So all you have to do here instead of writing linear gradient is to write in uh, radial. And you can see it's a circle just like that. So it's going uh, red out towards blue. And just like before, you can put in uh, stops. So we can do red 50%. Um, so it's going to go red up to 50% and then it's going to start transitioning into the blue. With both types of gradients, we can also create solid switches in color simply by setting stops which overlap each other. Um, so for here, I'm going to move this down to like 30%. So we have red, but if I had a blue here at 30% and then blue transitioning into blue, it's just going to give me um, a circle like this because it's going, so it's going red, solid red until 30%, but then it's going, I have blue and it's going that blue all the way out until the end. So we end up getting these solid colors. And this of course would work the same for a linear, linear gradient, just as well as with a uh, solid one. So, you know, we could do something like that to get a two-toned uh, color if you want. Um, and of course here we could do something like red 10%, uh, blue 10%. Uh, then we could do blue 20%, comma red 20%. And you could start giving yourself like a striped pattern like that. Uh, and again, you could change the direction here. So, you know, top left and we can give ourselves uh, some interesting things like that. The only thing with these repeating ones, it can be really annoying to have to sort of try and repeat yourself over and over and over again like that. And you probably don't want to be doing that if you need sort of a banded type of thing. Um, so what we can do actually, if you do need something that's repeating itself a lot, let's empty this out. We have a repeating radial gradient. So uh, with our repeating radial gradient, let's just do red comma blue. When you do it like this, you're not actually going to notice. So you can see it just this like smooth thing. Let's do red space, uh, red 10 pixels. Then we can do blue 10 pixels, blue 20 pixels. 
And oh my goodness, that's an attack on the senses. So let's actually switch this over to a linear because it's going to be a little bit less hard on the eyes. Still pretty bad. Um, but we can also change the direction of it now. So we can say uh, 45 uh, degrees. Um, so you can get some interesting things like this where you can get these repeating patterns. And of course, um, or what if we did like red 30, blue 30, and then a blue 40. Um, you know, you can get different sized patterns going on. So all really, really interesting. And of course, you could uh, use this, I think, in some interesting and fun ways. And there we have it, CSS gradients. They're pretty easy to use. They're really useful. And there's actually some really creative and out of the box ways you can use them to pull off some creative stuff. If you'd like to see some of those, leave a comment down below to let me know. And maybe I could do a more in-depth than one of my longer videos on those if it's something that you guys are interested in. Um, so yeah, don't be shy. Leave a comment down below. Have an amazing weekend, and of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.